Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, we are in the month of September. Praise God. And listen, God has said that this month, seek my mercy, ask for my mercy, and treat me for my mercy. Because you're going to live by his mercy. Now, why am I sharing God's truth with you? Why am I bringing God's word to you? So that your life will be patterned when you take responsibility according to the mercy of God. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Remember yesterday I told you, ask for increase. Now, with that mindset of increase, lift up your voice right now and say with me, say, Father... I demand right now for my daily bread. I receive it from your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was reading the scripture to you yesterday in Psalm 119 and verse 64. Psalm 119 and verse... You know, I always tell you this. I can take a scripture and I'll spend, like this scripture now, I can spend weeks and weeks and weeks teaching on this particular scripture. It's, it's, it's the, it's the fulcrum of, of wisdom and understanding. So from it, we can begin to just come out and, I can't even ask about You know, when, when, when God told Joshua, you shall meditate on it day and night. People think he meant you shall cram it. It's not talking about cramming. See, because now you look at this, this scripture, and that's what I do on this broadcast. I bring forth my meditations by the Spirit of God. See? Yes. So when I begin to speak, I'm not just speaking to you, Bible study. I'm speaking to you the deep things that the Spirit of God has exposed me to in my meditations, Okay? Now, when I say deep things, I always tell you this, any revelation that will not influence your lifestyle, any revelation that will not influence um, your choices in life, is, is, doesn't make sense. Okay? Now, the principle of God is that you will live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Take note, you will live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness so you don't have to cheat anybody to get something you don't have to pull anybody down to achieve something you don't need to fight with anybody to no you don't that you will live a godly life a quiet and peaceable life you will live in quietness you know god has spoken that in quietness and in, in assurance now everything god said is to give you i told you yesterday his thoughts concerning us they are good even in the ember months praise god they are good and and that's why you must receive increase from the lord praise god so so psalm, psalm 60 psalm 119 verse 64 the earth, O oh Lord, is full of thy mercy. I come in See, when I say the earth is full, I, I begin to think of every corner of the earth. I begin to think of every corner around me. I begin to think of everything that I have to do in life. And God is saying, David is saying, which is the truth, because David got this by understanding. So he said, the earth is full. He didn't just say the earth has your mercy. The earth is full of your mercy. So why are people not enjoying the mercy of God? Why are people not seeing? Why are people not? Why are people suffering? Why, if the earth is full of God's mercy, then why am I suffering? Why do I labor? Why do I? Hey, my people are destroyed for what lack of knowledge. God said it. God said, my people. He didn't say the world. He said, my people. My people. They get destroyed because they lack knowledge. Look at what David said next. After he said, he just testified that the earth is full of God's mercy. Now look at what he said next. He says, teach me thy statutes. What are the statutes of God? 
Now, statutes, you easily want to think statutes are laws. But they are the deepest form of laws, okay? Like you say, the laws that govern the universe, okay? Yeah, it's like, that's that's exactly like say, the statutes that govern the universe, okay? Now, there are laws that are man-made to keep order in the society. But you see, those laws are dependent on statutes. For example, you might say the law of do unto others as you want others to do unto you. Now, that's not just a law. That's a statute. Yes. Now, that's a universal um, universal rule that applies to every human being, okay? Yeah. Now, all you say, what goes around comes around, okay? All those things. David is saying, teach me your statutes. He didn't just say, teach me statutes. He said, teach me your. Remember, Remember, who, whose mercy fills the whole earth? God's mercy. Now, if God have applied his mercy to the whole earth, and David in his wisdom and understanding was saying, if I would just understand the statutes of God, then I will partake of the mess, every mercy that exists. Wow. Think about that. If I will understand God, if I will understand the ways of God, if I will understand the oppressions of God, if I will understand the statutes of God, not just the laws that he said. See, every law that God, for example, you know, Moses gave them the laws, the Ten Commandments and several other laws. But now, you see those laws, they came from somewhere. They came from an established law in the universe of God that God created. In other words, the, the wisdom when God was creating the world, the wisdom when God was creating man, there was something, there was a law governing his own heart. And that's what God's statutes is. If you will understand God's status, then the laws that follow those status, you will begin to operate them with understanding. See? Now, here David is saying, if I will just understand the status of God, then I will, I will, I will enjoy every mercy that exists on the earth. Is it possible to enjoy every mercy? Yes! Now the mercy of God is, 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 is the benevolence of God, okay? God loves judgment. Yes, he does. He does love judgment. He does love righteousness. He does love judgment. And, 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 and he, he loves equity. Now, he, he, he loves to exercise loving kindness. God is slow to anger. He's slow to judgment. Are you getting that? That's the character of God. He's slow to, very slow to judgment. Why is he slow to judgment? See, you know, that's why I always tell people this. I say, listen, don't waste your time praying for the downfall of another person before your promotion. You know, I, I know there are pastors who, who, um, who pray those kind of prayers. Anybody that is your enemy, let them be destroyed. Now, this is Ember Month, so you hear all those kind of prayers. Anyone who's standing against you, they, I command them to die. Let a sword be released and cut off their heads. Now, it's normal to pray those prayers, but then you see those kind of thoughts, those kind of reasoning takes away the real responsibility from the right people. Now, it's easier to reason let God cut off the head of my enemy and then I hear that somebody died Ah! But has it really, really, really empowered me? No. It just made me to feel relaxed and continue my, assuming I was a lazy person. I'll continue that laziness. So it has not improved my person in any way. Please understand what I'm sharing with you. But when I, when I pray and say, may God give you the wisdom to deal with your enemies. Now, when I say wisdom to deal with your enemies, don't say wisdom to attack them and defeat them. No. 
wisdom to progress even in the midst of your enemies. Yes, there's such a wisdom like that. See, your enemies, see, you don't know some kind of enemies. They are too powerful. No, they can't match the power that is available for you. They can't match it. I'm telling you the truth, they can't, you don't know the mercy of God. They can't match it. Even Satan himself cannot match. Didn't you read what Satan said about Job? He, he went before the Lord and said, you have put an edge around him. That's why no, nothing can happen to him. The guy is living in safety. Possibly Job didn't even know that. See? But, but Satan testified. What does that tell you? He had tried. Now, the Bible now lets us understand that anyone who breaks an edge, okay, the serpent will bite him. Now, what do you understand from that? Satan testifying. Now, this is how you reason scriptures. Satan has testified that God had built an edge around Job. And now you find out again that there is a possibility or that it's possible to break an hedge. And when you break an hedge, the serpent bites you. So now what does that tell you as a godly person? It means it's not enough to stay in the, in the midst of that hedge. It's also important to protect that hedge. It's important you protect it. See? Now, when you dwell inside that hedge, you're making progress. Everything is working fine. But Satan, knowing that that hedge is around you, will begin to seek ways to cut. Now, he didn't say, if Satan penetrates an hedge, he will bite. He said, if you break. So the way the hedge gets opened is by you breaking it. And as all the manipulations Satan would want to do, I could be right a vina. If you understand this, you will live so peaceably. You know, people wonder how come you're so calm? How come, how come nothing ruffles you? I've heard people say that concerning people. I've heard that I've heard people say that to me all the time. Yeah, you don't get you know, someone actually told me that. Look, I'm I'm trying to see what will get you really, really upset. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, why? It's just my nature. It's not just my nature. I learned it. I'm talking about me. I learned if I can learn it, you can learn it too. Does that mean you don't have people that are against you? Of course. You see, the fact that Satan himself is against you, I, I know, I'm aware, fully aware, fully, fully aware that if Satan has a way, he will not want to see me the next second on this earth, not anywhere near this earth. If he knows, he knows I know. If he has his way, but you see, that's the thing. He can never have his way, praise God, because the like Paul said, we are not ignorant of his devices. I know his devices. He can't just attack me from anywhere. No. How? He doesn't have that power. For Satan to attack you, he will first of all deceive you to break the edge. And when you break the edge, he attacks. Now you as a wise person, you must dev I call this kebante nepar. I'm teaching how to live life. As a wise person, you must develop layers and layers of protecting the hedge that God has put around you. The hedge is there, but you can break it. So if you are wise, knowing that this hedge is your protection, and the day it's broken, the serpent is waiting. He won't last. See, he won't, he won't take... He, 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 it's, like he's, it's like the serpent is hanging around that hedge, looking for any hole, even a crack, he will try to put his head in. But he cannot break it. Nobody can break it. You're the only one that can break it. I'm telling you about the status of God. You are protected beyond what you think. You are protected. But do you know I was talking to 
one of my daughters recently, you know, and someone had called her for a job. And she called me, oh, um, I, I have to travel today. I'm like, where are you traveling to? Oh, they called me for a job in so and so place. I have to travel like four hours to that place. I'm like, so when did they call you? So just this morning, they called me. Why are they just calling you this morning? And you have to leave this morning. I said, you don't do things like that. You don't do things like that. Now you see, someone say, ah, but isn't the job when they pay her? Whether they will pay or not, you must be wise in life. Now it's different if you are expecting something, okay? You, you are looking up, I'm, I'm expecting a call. Ah, if that call comes, something good is going to happen for me. Then the call comes and said, look, man, I just got a space for you. Can you come right now? Yes, because I've been waiting for it. See, But then if out of the blues, if someone just calls you and says, pack your bag and start coming to Susan so place now. No, you don't move like that. You don't move like that. Now, that character or that attitude or systems like that, if you flow with things like that, you will easily break your edge. And Satan tries you I cope in ten neferetis kapardigisia. You see, if Satan wants to catch you with adultery, for example, or fornication, he doesn't come straight at you. Now, now if you are, for example, you know, claiming I'm holy, I can never, uh, me, I can never fornicate. I can never commit adultery. He listens to your words. Satan listens to your words. Yeah, he does. And he has seen that adultery for you is an edge that if it's broken, ah, he will destroy your life. Now, there are people that can commit adultery and they just move on. Hey, do anything you want to. That's your business. I've done what I need to do. And truly nothing happens to them. But if Satan sees that your edge if he comes into that head, now because of your frame, because of your pride, because of your everything that's associated with you, if he knows that if he can get you that, he will bring you completely down. And now you're claiming, I am never. He's not going to just throw it at you at, at once. No. He's going to first of all start breaking the little, little hedge before the main one. You introduce the first of all, pornography and see how you respond to it. It's a choice. It's, he's the one he's watching. Let me see how you respond to that. Thing. Watch that movie. Watch that thing. Watch that thing. Then you watch like, mm, 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 mm. Ah, no, this thing is wrong. This thing is wrong. Let me just check again. Mm, mm, mm. Ah, mm, ah. Mm, this is wrong. This is, but there's something. You know, I, I can learn something from this. So. What's going on? Then you begin to reason it. You begin to reason it. You begin to reason it. He's watching you. Mm. He has broken that one. You're beginning to see. It's implanted in your mind. Now, somehow, he's gotten in your mind how to visualize being with another woman or fornication, being with a woman. He, somehow, he has stored it up there. Now, he needs to now create the circumstances that will put you, you know what I'm talking about, in, in that kind of situation. Then he, I call it Kabena. That guy can do stuff. <laughs> you, before you realize it, you are trapped in a place where you're not like, um, le- Mm, no, let me carry out that thing that is on my mind. He has played it in your mind for a long time. He has. But they say, you will know. You will know that if I cross this path and things go wrong, I'm finished. You will know. You will know it. But then he has so weakened you in your mind. That you just feel, let me damn everything and go for this. And you do it. 
He's collected his receipt and he's holding it. The day he will bring out that receipt is the day he's ready. Because now that alone, I could be let's say. My time is up. Praise <laughs> God. Ah, I go benefit Listen to me. When we're done this month, you will understand God's way of protecting you and showing you mercy. You will understand. And you will overcome that devil in such a terrible way. He will never, never recover from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a fantastic day ahead. Bye.